is how we worship. Prepare worship with prayer. Wear proper attire. Bring your Bible. Prepare your offering. Organize and clean your surroundings. Avoid distractions. Lift up your voice for praise and worship. And finally, give God your full attention. Hey everyone, good morning. Happy Sunday to you. Teacher Mian here. Well, we are so glad to have you join us for Sunday worship this morning. Now, before we jump into our worship service, I just wanted to let you know that next week we have an awesome gift bag ready for each and every single one of you as we celebrate Children's Sunday. Now, Children's Sunday, we usually have a party, we have games, uh, snacks at church, but just like last year, uh, we're not able to do it in person. And so the teachers and I, we just want you guys to know how much we love you guys and care for each one of you. And so we have something planned for you next week and you can pick it up with your parents. And you know, even though this year has been difficult and really continues to be, we are so proud of how you guys have uh, handled the challenges as it has come and you have adapted to the best of your ability all while trusting in God. And so we just want to celebrate you guys and tell you how much we love you and appreciate each one of you guys. So next week around 2 o'clock, come check us out at church. And we'll be happy to say hi uh, and see you guys in person. We'll be masked, of course, but we'll say a quick hello and hand you the gifts and you can be on your way. And so we're excited to see you guys. Please come out if you can. Now, for those of you guys who are watching and joining us in Korea, don't worry because we have not forgotten about you. We love you guys too and we miss you. And we appreciate each uh, of you and the way that you guys have participated from such a long distance and we will be sending you a little gift from us in the mail and so be on the lookout for that all right guys let's go ahead and say a prayer together as we begin our morning worship today go ahead and bow your heads with me father uh, i'm so reminded of how blessed we are with uh, our students uh, the fact that they are healthy the fact that they are growing, not just physically, but also in faith, spiritually. And we want to give you the glory and honor uh, and all the credit for that. We pray that you would show us uh, in many different ways the way that we can grow uh, in our relationship with Jesus, in our knowledge of Jesus, uh, because we want to be more like Jesus. And we want to please you uh, in all that we do, the way that we live, whatever we do. Uh, we want to give you the glory. And so, Lord, as we worship today, um, help our minds to be focused on you and you alone, to be uh, just grounded today, not distracted by anything that's going on uh, in our world, but ready to give you all of our attention. So we worship you this morning. We pray that you be glorified and pleased as you see us uh, worship you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Just like you love this world So help me know you, Jesus Cause I want to trust you more So help me love you, Jesus Just like you love this world So help me know you, Jesus Cause I want to trust you more So help me love you, Jesus Just like you love this world So help me know you, Jesus Cause I want to trust you more So help me love you, Jesus For God so loved the world That He gave His only Son Whoever believes in Him Will have eternal life Will have eternal life Yeah
cross before me, the world behind me, I fix my eyes on Him, my Creator, my living Savior, forgiver of my sin, oh. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right, great job with body worship. So let's do a review of our big picture question and remind ourselves about this most important mission that God has given us. Now, what is our mission as Christians? Do you guys remember the answer? You know, our mission is to make disciples of all nations by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, while each one of you uh, has a specific assignment to carry out uh, this mission, we all work as a team to complete the bigger goal together. Now we started out by looking at Peter's escape from prison to remind us of our purpose in God's power. And last time we prepared ourselves for even possible traverse for ourselves by learning about Paul's first journey. Today's Bible story is called the Church 
divided. And we will look at a letter from Paul to the Christians in a place called Corinth. Now the church there was divided, which means that it was apart or was separated. And Paul gave them some crucial instructions on how to work and serve together as God's people. And so let's take a look at what Paul's instructions can teach us today. So go ahead and open up your Bible to 1 Corinthians, and we're going to kind of land in chapters 1 through 6. We're going to look at chapter 2 in our review, and let's go ahead and take a listen to our Bible story today, and we'll see you right back here. Paul wrote a letter to the church at Corinth. Years after Paul helped start the church in Corinth, the believers there were facing problems. One problem was that the church was divided. The people did not always get along or agree about what was most important. The believers met in small groups and had different leaders. Some groups were arguing that their leaders were better than others. One person would say, I belong to Paul. Another would say, I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Peter, or I belong to Christ. Paul wanted this to stop. Is Christ divided? Paul asked. Of course not. Jesus came to bring people together as one body, brothers and sisters in God's family. Christians should not fight about which human leader has the most wisdom or strength. What is most important is the gospel. Paul said, the word of the cross is hmm. foolishness to those who are perishing, but it is the power of God to us who are being saved. God uses what seems foolish to the world, that is God, the Son giving up his life for us, in order to bring salvation to the world. Paul also reminded the church that believers cannot boast about themselves or other people. No human is as wise or powerful as God. When Paul preached, he didn't use fancy words so that people would think he was smart. He simply shared the good news about Jesus. Everyone in the church is united around Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins. He is God's wisdom and power. When we remember the gospel, we can live in unity with others. Other things, like immaturity and foolishness, cause division in the church. Paul wrote his letter to help the believers in Corinth. He told them many things about how to follow Jesus. Believers should live in such a way that people see them and know they belong to Jesus. Paul told the believers in the Corinthian church to come together because of the gospel. He reminded them that Jesus saves sinners. Because of Jesus and what he has done, believers can humbly come together as one body. I hope you guys enjoyed that story. Now, you know, the church in Corinth was confused about what was truly, truly important. It seems that they lost sight of their purpose and their mission, which was to share the love and the good news of Jesus. And they allowed immaturity and foolishness to cause division and separation within the church. But Paul, he was quick to remind them that the gospel unites all kinds of people in love. What does that mean? That the gospel brings together people who have differences or who think differently, who have different cultures and even languages together in the love of Jesus Christ. It didn't matter who their teacher was or who they thought was the smartest leader or whatever. Jesus came to bring us all together as one body and one family in his name. I love that Paul also reminded the church how he taught them. Now, do you remember Paul's approach? Let's find this uh, as we read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. I'll give you a few moments to find those verses, and I'll be reading in the NLT version. It doesn't matter if you have a different version. It's all really the same. And so go ahead and find 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Okay, I hope you found it. Let me read it for you. So this is Paul speaking. 
When I first came to you, dear brothers and sisters, I didn't use lofty words and impressive wisdom to tell you God's secret plan. For I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified. I came to you in weakness, timid and trembling, and my message and my preaching were very plain. Rather than using clever and persuasive speeches, I relied only on the power of the Holy Spirit. I did this so that you would trust not in human wisdom, but in the power of God. Amen. You see, Paul, he purposely didn't use fancy, long, or hard words. He didn't want people drawn to the gospel because of his flashy or uh, impressive presentation. He wanted people to focus on the power of the Holy Spirit, not on his efforts or abilities. You know, I like this because it reminds me that I don't have to be the best speaker or know all the answers to every question when I tell others about Jesus. I can simply share what Jesus has done in my life, and so can you. You know, then the Holy Spirit can use those words and work in other people's hearts. Now, what is our Christ connection? You know, Paul told believers in the Corinthian church to come together as one because of the gospel. He reminded them that Jesus saves sinners. And because of Jesus and what he has done, believers can humbly come together as one body under his name. And so the way that we love one another and treat one another within the church, so that means the way that we treat other Christians, other brothers and sisters in Christ, has a huge impact on how we treat others outside of the church, those that don't know who Jesus is yet. And so our love for others is often our loudest testimony to those who don't know Jesus yet. So again, the gospel unites all kinds of people in love. And Jesus commands us to make disciples of all nations. Right? That's our big picture question answer. And so we can't do that if we're distracted by arguments or disagreements amongst ourselves. We need to love one another and show others that the gospel unites all kinds of people in love. And so to this end, let's go ahead and pray together. As we bow our heads, let's go to the Lord and ask Him to bring us together so that uh, God can show His love through us as His people. All right, let's pray. Father, would you lead us in love to share the gospel, share the good news of Jesus together as one body? Father, I pray for our students and myself uh, that as we think about ways that we can uh, tell and share about who Jesus is, that you would give us courage and wisdom that you would give us love and unity, that we would truly be uh, doing it together by your Spirit, by the power of the Holy Spirit, not by the things that we can say or how clever we are or how smart or how funny we are, and not to take pride in ourselves, but like Paul, uh, to be humble, to be meek, uh, to be a person who is really just wanting to make Jesus look big. And so, God, we want to make much of you in our life. We pray that you would help us to do that. But Lord, give us unity. Help us to do it together in love that when others see us, that they would truly see the love of Jesus shining through. That that would be the loudest thing that people would see and hear. And so give us more of your love, God, uh, for your people and for those who do not know you, that when we have the opportunity to share, that we would do it and that we would do it in a spirit of love. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunities that you give us to share about you. Help us to take those opportunities uh, to really uh, be brave and courageous for your sake and for their good. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. worship to you and thank you for letting our friends being healthy and safe and th and please let the people who got the vaccine stay strong and not be weak
and Jesus' name we pray, amen. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 to 20. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 31. Amen. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice and let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. First Chronicles 16, verse 31.